All right, ladies and gentlemen, calm down. A lot of amazingness is about to take place. We have Bridget Nielsen coming to the stage right now. And I, put your hands together. And from what I understand, what she's about to talk about is a surprise. Yeah. All right, you have fun, enjoy. Hey guys. This is exciting. This is the first time I haven't had just a camera in front of my face. So I can see people. So this is super exciting. Um, and this is the first official Sedona Cosmic Oriented Conference, which is huge. I've lived here for over five years. And this is a big deal. This is a big shift in consciousness that it was allowed to come in and especially be born from Sedona, like locals, just playing the musicians and the speakers. So it's really special. And I just wanted to like say that out loud as being someone who lives here. Um, so I wanted to take a little poll and raise your hand if you associate yourself with the idea of starseed or wander. OK, that's about 95% of the room, <laughs> as we know. So as I was preparing for what wanted to come through today from me, um, that word came to me, star seed, star seed. And I work a lot with seeds because I do a lot of raw food stuff. And the idea of a seed is something that has not yet come to fruition. And when it does come to fruition, what does it do? It blooms. It blooms into something. It blooms into a flower. If we're thinking about an egg, it cracks open and becomes an animal. These things take, take flight and come to full life. So when I was thinking about us in terms of star seeds, it came through that there's a new evolution to it to where we need to become star blooms, star blossoms. And in theme with Earth Day, actually, tomorrow, this is a big Earth Day weekend, and that's happening here in Sedona right now. Um, I was like, wow, you know, it really is coming back down to Earth and blooming in a new way. And I know that that can start to become a little bit scary, because it's like, oh, no, she's talking about Earth. And um, right now, we're not on YouTube, so you can't click out, <laughs> which is kind of fun. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little bit about how to bring your heavenliness, your cosmic nature to earth to bloom. And so going back to the analogy of the seed, we're just going to go all the way through. What happens with a seed is its potential, right? It's microcosmic life force from the macro that has the potential to become something amazing. And it isn't come to fruit yet, like we've been saying. So right now it's in germination. It, it needs to be activated. So the question came to me, OK, well, star bloom, how do we move from star seed to star bloom? And my partner is a poet. And in one of his songs, he says, there's something on this planet that we came to do. And by engaging in it, it awakens you. So this, this in-between space is to engage with yourself, to engage with Earth, to engage with your mission. And that is the thing that brings this fruit to fruition. So when we think of engaging, this is where it gets a little bit scary to the starseed energy, which is before you've, before you've fruited and you're in this, this stage of hibernation, incubation, potential within the seed, what begins to happen is it wants to break free but it's under dirt, it's under, it's under this earth in blackness. And so that can be akin to the 3D, right? Because we're all wanting to go to 5D and ascend. And the 3D can be that black, lonely dirt, this place where it's just like, what do I even do? And it's uncomfortable. And so there's these moments in our lives where we have to break through that uncomfortability to begin to sprout. And when we're able to sprout and break through to the surface, what then happens is that is the period of like going into the fifth dimension where we bloom into our full self. So this uncomfortability is kind of interesting to me because we're being asked to do things that pushes our comfort zone and stretches us in all moments. And when we rise to that occasion and actually do it, 
that's when we can actually blossom. So, for instance, for me, I know that you guys have like seen me on YouTube, and it's like, oh, she's so comfortable and like exuberant and stuff. And that was not the case. When I was young, the most terrifying thing ever was to speak and to read out loud. I would go through this like panic attack, and my teacher would call on me and not to read this book in front of the class, and it would be so scary, and I would just freeze up and then the teacher would eventually feel bad for me and popcorn to the next person. And so this was one of my themes that came forward in my life was this, this fear of speaking, this fear of expressing myself. And whatever that fear is within you, the thing that you're most afraid of is probably your gift, probably the thing that you're meant to bring to the world. And so there was some part of me that knew this. So I was like, oh, I have to figure this out. I can't just hide. And so in college, I took speaking classes. I knew that I needed to continue to open and to be able to share. And I didn't understand why, but it was uncomfortable after uncomfortability. And finally, um, there was a transition. And I want to bring this, this into kind of like a different situation because right now, one of the reasons that you've come to this conference is, um, is to see this, this, this fruiting body of, of expression, of new information coming through, and people that are ready to share it. So, for instance, like Corey, you know, Corey's here, everyone's super excited for him to talk, huh? <laughs> the, the energy like amped up. The second he, he came in, everyone was extra excited. So someone like him, he's put his life on the line through like uncomfortability, getting out there in the limelight. And it's like, oh my gosh, there's something about that that you feel in him that's that authentic authenticity and that also like pushing the comfort zone to do what he's mo meant to do on earth. And that's like, oh my gosh, it's so powerful. It's so engaging. And that's what's created everything that's going on right now in disclosure, in the disclosure movement. And we see this with people like Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk knew that he had no choice but to put all of his money, every last cent into Tesla to change the car market, to get off of fossil fuels, to start transitioning cars. So there's these moments where we must face that there's no choice. It's just something that we have to do. And Corey and Elon, these people have come to this place. And that energy is what's really fascinating. And when people see that energy, like when you guys see that, it begins to activate you. And it begins to shake open your seed and make it sprout so that you can blossom. And then you can join like us on stage. The idea in your own being, I'm serious, is... <laughs> I know, right? I can't say I'm serious because I'm usually not. But there is this, there is this moment where it's, it's really about each of us coming into our full mission. And that looks like all of us doing something great. Not even something behind the scenes, but in our own right, in our own segments and uniqueness, coming to that fruition like in our own way. And so it would be something magical if within a few years you took this information, you took this energy and was like, how can I move from my seed into my blossom? And you actually did it and manifested it into the world. And then a few years from now, all of us could be in the position of sharing something with others. That is special, that is potent. And so for me, how that happened is there, there comes this point of no choice where it's like, you just have no other choice. You have to do it. You have to face the fear and go into courage. And for me, what happened was I had come to terms with all of my like experiences and my abduction and all of that stuff. And I was really getting into this idea of how things had been hidden and non-disclosed about extraterrestrials. And I was like, man, that's not helpful because I have all these experiences and it's not good for the world. What can I do? And I knew from the spiritual you know, thing of like, you change within and then you change the world. And so I was like, oh, well, I can start with that. And so I started with that and I was like, okay, well, if I can disclose in myself, disclose in my own energy, then that will be a microcosmic reflection to help the macro. And so that's what I did. And I was like, okay, well, 
I can disclose. So I could make a YouTube video, and I'm sure just my mom would see it, and, but, I, but I would have disclosed, right? And so that's what I did. I made my first YouTube video just to be like, you know what, I need to disclose within myself. And I honestly didn't think anyone would ever see it. And then I shared it to Facebook because I knew that I had to, like it was part of the expression. And once I shared it to Facebook, I was living in Los Angeles and someone sent it to the biggest radio station in Los Angeles. So the next morning, my voice talking about my abduction experiences was all over like the radio. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and my ex-boyfriend calls me and he's like, Bridget. And he's like hyper-Christian. He's like, did you know that like you're all over the radio talking about alien abduction? I'm like, yeah, and he's like, this is your moment. He's, he was in PR, and he's like, this is your moment. You better back down from this, because this will ruin your career forever, and you'll be this, like, alien girl. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I have no choice. I already, when I did it, when I took that first step, when I took that leap of faith into this knowing place of my experiences, who I am, I just had to do it and there was no going back. And it has to be a full commitment. It has to be a full surrender to the path. And so I said, nope, we're gonna continue on with this. We're just gonna do it. And so I contacted the radio station and I got on air, because I was like, I wanna speak for myself. And I spoke for myself and, and expressed what happened and many people hundreds of emails came in to me being like, I've had similar experiences, and, and that's where it started for me. And from that, like, there was, there was this, this lifting of this, this fear of the speaking because I had no choice. And when I was in mission, when I was doing something that I had to do for the greater good, it could just come through when it needed to come through. And so even in preparation for talking to you guys right now, it was like, I've never talked like live in front of a bunch of people and it was a, it's a stretch it's a stretch for me but the thing is is the stretch what it actually is is it's that sprouting of the seed moving into like you know when the seed like unwinds and sprouts open and then flowers that's the stretch so when we feel it in this way and when we feel that pressure from the 3D environment around us and like these challenges. Remember that it's your seed actually moving. It's breaking open. It's starting to activate. It's not something to be afraid of. It's something to be like, yo, I came here. I'm strong enough because that's the point is we are star seeds. If you came here, if you're here right now, you are strong enough to handle it. You're strong enough to step into that, to step into who you're supposed to be. So in this upward motion, in this blossoming, what happens is that other people begin to see that. And when they see it, then they're inspired and it creates this momentum where they want to activate. And what also happens is when, when you're a seed, nothing can support you, nothing can see you because you're not actually glowing. You're not actually like lit up yet. You know, like your, your higher self and all of your like galactic connections are like, where are they? I thought we sent them down, you know? And they're like trying to find you. But what happens when you sprout, what happens when you open and you reach up and you begin to bloom, they can see you, they can feel you. Your higher self can, can bring down that energy. You can be a conduit. And you can also go into the earth. And when you go into the earth, of course, you're gonna be nourished and grounded too. And one of the interesting things is that I was thinking about in this whole blooming sprouting idea is associated with food and when you eat foods that aren't sprouted so you eat seeds or nuts that aren't sprouted you can't digest them you can't digest them well and so i was thinking about this in terms of humans in terms of us if we are not yet sprouted we are not digestible <laughs> and we're not <laughs> digestible to the people around us. So that energy where it's like, I'm misunderstood, no one gets me, like the empath, like the sensitivity, those kinds of things. When we're not sprouted, it makes it even harder because the energies around us are like, 
ah, I can't quite tell what you are. <laughs> you know, I can't quite take you in. You know, I can't quite receive you. And so there's something in this too that makes you able to be received and to be fully seen because when you're your flower, like if you picture like a rose blooming, you're like, oh yeah. But like before it blooms, you're like, okay, what is that thing? So it's really important to go to this, this stage of blooming. So within yourselves right now and within yourselves over this weekend, begin to feel that seed. We know that we're all seeds here, sprouted, moving towards this. I mean, even you guys coming here to this conference right now is is stretching you like you're in you had to get to Sedona it's even hard for most people to get to Sedona because like the dimensional gate doesn't let a lot of people in it's true and um, and then to be here and sitting next to other people and sharing your experiences it's definitely like an incubated space that's safe you know it feels safe because everyone here is in aliens um, <laughs> But it's, it's a stretch, like it's a really good thing. Like this is the beginning of your own incubation that's going to like burst open. And I wanna say too, um, I just started shooting a series that is interviewing mainstream people, talking to them, seeing if they believe in aliens and UFOs. And we just shot two episodes inter interviewing tourists, so no one from Sedona, and Everyone, everyone that we interviewed, we interviewed like 15, 20 people, said there's got to be something out there. There has to be something out there. And then the other half was like, I've had these crazy experiences and these are normal people. So again, <laughs> you're not normal. <laughs> And that's definitely something to clap for. Like that is special. That's a really good thing. And that's the point of this whole thing is being our unique selves, being the outrageous, like picture like some like crazy orchid that's like, woo. you know, like you need to, we need these different expressions. It's so important, especially right now in the time of like the ant and like the normal person um, that, that has become this programmed thing. It's like it's so important to become something unique. So what I wanted to do right now was let a few of you, because one of the things that's big for me is it's strange being on like a stage above you. I'm really into like equality and community and connection. And so what I wanted to do is ask a few people what their uncomfortability is and what they want to blossom into when they go through that threshold into the unknown. So raise your hand if you want to share. This is a good space. This is like a safe space where we can do this and we can like start to not just become viewers, right? But we can become participants and becoming a participant in life, in this game, in this expression is going to be what the world has to have right now. You, what's your name? My name is Sarah. Hi, Sarah, where are you from? I'm Mesa. Mesa, okay, Arizona girl. I'm super excited to come. Thank <laughs> <laughs> What's in your hair? Little sunflowers that I love it. See, she's already blooming. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, my uncomfortability is, though everyone here already knows, I don't mind speaking in front of personally, um, I've always wanted to be a writer, and yet I find that writing my truth, writing what I feel needs to be written, sometimes comes in halting blocks, and it's strange, it's very awkward to be able to speak publicly in front of people, but when it comes to personally sitting and writing it out, to feel like there is a wall or a block there that I can't sometimes feel like I can and, and so when you get to that block, how do you, what do you do? Or do you just sit in the block or does it eventually move through? I've been able to move through it several times, but what I generally do is I like to allow my writing to kind of go organically. I don't plan it. So I go back and I start at the beginning and I read through it 
and I ask him, what do you, where are you going now? Because I can't leave you there, where are you going now? And sometimes it comes in sentences, you know, two sentences a week, sentence a week, whatever, but I generally get through it. That's great. And so what would you ultimately like to blossom into? Like, what do you see your contribution to humanity and just your own expression being? I'm starting with fiction, but I really want to help people understand not just themselves, but the people around them. I want to be a public author that people say, you helped me change my life. You helped me to change my marriage, my kids, my way of looking at the world and the cosmos and every single thing. Awesome. I love that. And that's clear, you know? That's, that's really important. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing, because that's the thing, too, is part of it is, like, the clarification and the internal questing, where we go inside and we're like, okay, well, what is it, you know, that, that I'm meant to do? And so asking that question and getting really quiet, especially in a space like Sedona, where this higher information can come through so much more clearly and easily, ask yourself this question, begin to clarify it and to know that you don't have to live like in the 3D grind or anything. There is like total support for you on the other side of the 3D, whatever this side is. There's support over here. Um, so if there's someone else, does anyone else want to share? Oh yes, um, you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really love who I've blossomed into now. I love my life. But I know there's so much more. I feel like um, if what, I'm, what I'm reaching for is to become that galactic ambassador that I know I already am, but I haven't fully really embraced. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I love that. And it's especially nice, like, because I know, you know, Karen Marie's connections to the cosmos, but I didn't know you, you had much of a connection. So I like that you're wanting to express it, and even, like, that you were playing up here, like, at this conference. Like, that's a step towards it, right? That's awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Yes. Let's give Daniel. So just one more. And one more person that's like, you know, like extra nervous. You know, the one that wouldn't raise their hand. If there's, are you scared? <laughs> the waving hand probably isn't scared. OK, shy. You look shy. Let's do this. And do you wanna, can you stand up? Yeah! Give her a hand, give her a hand! I'm really proud of you right now. What's your name? Sarah, where are you from? Chandler, awesome, and? I don't know, I'm shaking my <laughs> What is it that you want to become that you know that you are? I just want everyone to just, I don't know, I want the world to change and for the best. And this is in this world for all, for animals, for plants. I don't know how to express it. That was perfect. <coughs> Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so did you even feel that? That was so special. Like, it's, it's just really getting to that place of, like, tenderness and vulnerability and, like, like our emotional center. Because sometimes we get really, like, numbed out, you know, having to put up 100 walls, like, being really sensitive. Um, so just getting back to that place of sensitivity is something that you can really use as fuel because ultimately that's going to be your passion and that's going to drive you towards blooming. So for the rest of this weekend, think about how you can transition from a star seed into a star bloom and what kind of blossom you want to be for yourself and for the world. So thanks, guys.